Hello. Oh. Okay, so looks like it's recording now. Okay, so uh, hopefully this won't stop. So otherwise, I'll go with my previous laptop. So what I want to say is that the first step that we do is we perform a dot one x authentication on the SSID. Once we have the dot one x authentication in place, the user, after getting authenticated, gets placed into the quarantine role. Once he gets placed into the quarantine role, where he'll have access to ClearPass server only. That agent which we have downloaded from the ClearPass server will perform a health check. Once it performs a health check, based on whether it's healthy or quarantine, we will assign healthy or quarantine role and send it to the IAP so that the user ends up in that role. If he's healthy, he'll he's given full access role. Okay, so for configuration, the first thing that we need to do for NAC is that we have to go ahead and configure a dot one SSID. Okay. So I have already created that. I've created an SSID called AB. Uh, I guess most of you saw that before. So once we click on the SSID, in your scenario, you will have to create a new SSID. Give you select. Uh, I mean, basically keep everything default. You have to create a dot one X SSID, and then after that, you go to security. In security, you have to add your authentication server as CPPM. Make sure you do not enable termination on the IAP. Okay, I've seen a lot of issues with that. So, I mean, basically, you cannot enable termination on IAP when you have CPPM as your radius server. Okay, so what you do is your authentication server will be CPPM. This needs to be added. Here, you will have an option to add if it's not there. And then you have to specify the IP address of the CPPM server, the shared secret key, and you have to enable RFC 3576. Okay, so these are the three options that needs to be enabled. That's it. You click on next and save the SSID. So the only thing that you change on the SSID while creating it is add an authentication server. That's it. And the WPA2 enterprise. These are the only things that you have to select. Save this SSID. Now, as I said before, a user which connects based on his health status can be either a quarantine user or a full access user so there are two different user roles here so we have to create two roles so that the users are placed in the appropriate ones so you go to security click on roles and then you have to add a new one okay i've already added a role called ab quarantine in this role what i'm doing is i'm allowing access to my clearpass server Remember now, if you have a cluster, you have to allow access to all the all the nodes, okay? And then allow access to DHCP, DNS, deny everything else. And and there is also a full access role. The full access role is required if a user successfully finishes the health check. Not finishes, but successfully passes the health check. Okay, so I'll say for full access, allow to any ac any destination, okay? So there are two roles that have been created on the IAP. Now we have to leverage that, those roles. We have to use those roles. And the way to do that is to pass the roles with ClearPass. Okay. So now I'll show you how you need to configure on the ClearPass. So the first thing on ClearPass that needs to be defined is we have to define something known as a posture policy. What is posture policy? Here we define what are the compliance requirements for my organization. What are the things that the organization wants to check? Does do they want do they want to check uh, Windows hotfixes? Do they want to check antiviruses? Do they want to check list of installed applications, USB USB devices, so on and so forth. So for that, I will create a posture policy, and for that, I have to click on Add. Once I click on add, then I'll get something like this where I have to specify the name first. After that, I click on posture plugins. I have to select this. This is usually unchecked. So you select this, click on configure. Well, here you have to specify on which devices you have to perform the health check. So customer has Windows 7, Windows 8. You have to enable check for all of them. So for example, I have only enabled check for Windows 8. 
customer has Windows 10, you have to enable it for Windows 10 as well. So on Windows 8, I'm, the only thing that I'm checking is I'm checking for antivirus. So I will say that check if an antivirus application is on or not. If it is on, it's a healthy device. If there is no antivirus, it's a quarantine device. It, it does not uh, respect my compliance requirements and it becomes a quarantine device. Okay, so any supported antivirus, the, re the way you do that is I, I have unchecked this to allow any antivirus. If your organization has your has their own antivirus like Symantec and there are a lot of them. If you see this list, there is a huge list here. So if an organization has a particular antivirus and they only want to ensure that that antivirus is present, you have to select that from the list. Okay, You can also do a lot of other things like check for real-time protection. If real-time protection is turned on on the antivirus or not. Check when was the last time the scan was performed, uh, when was the DAT file updated in how many hours or what should be the latest or what should be the version of DAT file that should be present minimum on that particular endpoint. All those things you can, all options are available here. You can play with those options. Okay. There are many other options like firewalls, spyware, windows hotfixes, USB devices, virtual machines, etc, etc. So that I'll leave up to you. You can play with it, play with those options uh, because these options are basically nothing but the things that you need to check on the endpoint. So once I do that, I click on save. My posture policy is already in place. Okay, so once I have this posture policy in place, I have to use this posture policy, right? So the first thing, as I said before as well, first thing that happens is .1x authentication. So I have to create a service for .1x authentication, right? But before that, Remember, we are sending two roles to the IAP, either a quarantine or a full access role. So the way to send a role to an IAP is using enforcement profile. Okay. So in that, I'll filter for my enforcement profiles that I have. So that didn't save. Okay. So I will say AB quarantine. In, and make sure that you select Aruba Radius Enforcement. That's there by default. The first thing that appears is Aruba Radius Enforcement. And in the Aruba user role, you have to mention the same role that you have created on your instant access point. Okay, so under security roles, whatever you have selected here, I mean, whatever you have created here, AB quarantine, the same role has to be present here. Okay. You click on save. Then I will create one more role, which is AB full access. And I will match what I want to send to the IAP. So AB hyphen full access. Now if this does not match, you will have issues. So make sure this matches exactly to what you have defined on the IAP. Okay. So now I have saved this. These two things are saved. Now I have to use this in an enforcement policy. Fine. The next step that I do is build an enforcement policy. Okay. I'm, I'm taking a bottom up approach. Okay. So first I'm creating a profile, then a policy. I'll tie down, tie down this policy to my service. Okay. Taking a bottom up approach compared to what we were doing yesterday where we we're creating a service first and so on. So here I will create a AB corporate health check or AB corporate policy. Okay. For enforcement policy, the default role will be deny. And I will set some rules here. Okay. The rules will be. That first thing I'll say is tips. Role equals user authenticated. What this means is once the user authentication is successful, this role gets automatically assigned. Okay. Uh, I will create the enforcement policy in a new video. Okay. The next video.